I've, I've wanted to tell you for a long time. I haven't told anyone else in Oakdale that I'm gay except you. Why not? Because I found that sometimes it changes the way people think about me, even if they don't want it to. No. No, I'm glad you told me. I mean, I always felt that there was, you know, a wall between us, and at least now I know what it is, you know. There was a wall between us. It was because I wasn't being honest, not because I'm gay. You mean so much to me. I didn't want to lead you on. Well, um... No, Hank, I mean, you were always honest from the very beginning that you were involved in a relationship in New York. Always. Do you live together? Yeah. And we believe in fidelity and mutual support just like anyone else in that kind of relationship does. His name is Charles Clayton. He's oh. the editor at Gotham House who's reading Seth's novel. He's very fair and very talented. I, I know he'll give Seth an honest opinion. I hope someday you two can meet. I think you'd like each other. Well, if it's important to you, I'll, uh... You know, I'm sure he's very nice. He's probably very special. I would please don't let this change anything between us. Oh, c <laughs> Come on, Hank. I mean, let's be honest with each other. I mean, it changes everything. I mean, you're still the same person that you were, but... I mean, I wanted to have a relationship with you. I thought about it, and now I... You know, I don't know. Oh. I, I wanted to tell you. I... Yeah. I never meant to hurt you or deceive you. I was afraid that I would lose you as a friend. I'm sorry I didn't tell you sooner. I hope that someday the perfect man will come into your life and love you with all of his heart because that's what you deserve. And you know, when that guy does come along, I think I'll always be just a little bit jealous of him. Where did you learn to skip stones like that? Movies. When I first hit New York, I didn't have any friends, so I'd spend the whole days in the movie theaters. For a while there, it seemed like every actor in Hollywood was skipping stones. I had four hops, that one. Five. <laughs> anyway, after work in the garment district, sometimes I'd go down by the Hudson and find some rocks and practice. I just never could get the hang of that. It's all on the wrist. Seems to me we're making small talk, Guy, but if you want to go back to the small house, talks? it's okay. All right, with a friend? Yeah, I just feel like we're ignoring this elephant in the room. Well, let's talk about the elephant, then. I hear he's gay. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's okay. If you can joke about it, that means you're not ashamed of me. No, I'm a little... I'm a little confused, I'm a little hurt, but why would I be ashamed? I'll just say I've been burned. Well, it must be hard. I mean, I think it's understandable that some people might be threatened by the way others express love. You have no idea. Have you told Barbara? I almost did a couple of times. I mean, I don't think she'd be shocked by it, but in fact, I think she'd even guess it a couple of times. I'm just afraid she might change the way she feels about me being so close to Paul. Would she be worried about that? I don't know. I just wouldn't want to risk it. I really care about that kid. I know just what he's going through. He's loved his father all his life, and now all of a sudden he's got to try and cut those ties and see him for what he really is. I know how that could really tear a kid apart. I thought you said you didn't know your parents. <laughs> yeah, well, that's something else I have to tell you about. Uh, I made that story up so that I wouldn't have to answer any questions. What happened? Yeah, uh... Well, I was born in a small town, and my mom did die when I was young. So, naturally, I had to depend on my dad a lot, and 
He really came through. He taught me a lot. He was my best friend. His favorite sport was fishing, and at dawn on Saturday mornings, he'd take me out to the bluest lake you ever saw. I feel like I learned everything worth knowing in the middle of that lake. We had great talks, just him and me, man to man. Sounds great. Yeah, he was uh, my hero. Anyway, I started having these sexual feelings when I hit my teens that I didn't understand, so I figured I'd go talk to Dad about it. There was nothing we couldn't handle. And then he, uh, he changed. One minute I was his son, and the next minute he was calling me all kinds of names that I'd never heard before. He said that uh, I disgusted him and that he would rather have no son at all than one like me. What did you do? I was paralyzed. I'd, I'd never seen that man before. I, I begged him to understand. I begged. But he never even heard me. So I left. I went to New York. Sorry. I survived. I mean, I could have gone through my whole life lying to him, but then we never would have found out who each other was. And I just assumed Paul didn't have to go through that alone. Anyhow, so uh, maybe now you understand why you and your family are so important to me. I understand a lot of things. Yeah, there were some bad years in New York. And then my career started coming together and my lifestyle. I started coming to terms with who I am. I even started to like myself again. Wow. And then you're way ahead of the game. I wish I could say the same thing. Well, it's not a, you are one of the best people I ever met. And until you start believing that, I'll be glad to keep telling you. That's a deal. And anyway, that's uh, basically it. I was just starting to get into this sort of content routine when Barbara called me up and offered me the job here in Oakdale. It must be difficult being so far away. Yeah. I love him a lot. It's been real strange having to go to outside phone booths to call him because I didn't want to talk to him in front of Barbara. It made me feel like I was doing something wrong, which is a big step backwards. So, next week when we go to New York for the premiere, I'm going to introduce him to her. No more secrets. No more secrets? No. Hmm. I think there ought to be a lot more people in the world like you. I was just thinking the same thing about you. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, and just for the record, uh, <laughs> I like women a lot. I like being with them and talking to them. I, I respect them. I mean I, I mean, I felt that. I, I definitely <laughs> felt that. Yeah, well, yeah. I really dumped a lot on you tonight. Mm. Uh, I think it's only fair I give you some time to digest right. it. And once you've thought about it, <sighs> if you want, you can give me a call. Lily's party or whatever we're doing is tomorrow. Will you be my date? Will you come? Bet. I'd love to. All right. Come in. Mm. Oh, sorry, bad timing. No, actually, it no. was good timing. I was just saying good night. Mrs. Snyder, thanks again for another wonderful dinner. Well, you're very welcome, and thank you for my beautiful, beautiful flowers. I hope you see, I see you again sometime soon. Is tomorrow soon enough? I've asked Hank to be my date for whatever we're doing for oh, Lily's right. party. Big surprise. Big surprise. <laughs> I'll walk you to the car. Okay. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.